Yes, uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak. If I happen to move the pages so that you can see them, please tell me, because I can do this. Okay, so uh, I will talk about density conjecture for horizontal families in SL2. And let me start by saying uh, what are density conjectures. Okay, so in my talk, G will be a semi simple uh, real D group. Uh, and then uh, we'll look at pi, which is a irreducible unitary representation. and uh, some lattice in G. And we will, we will be interested in uh, bounding the multiplicity of pi in uh, L2 of G mod gamma. So I'll use this notation M pi gamma. This is multiplicity of pi in L2 G mod gamma. So uh, density conjectures are specific estimates on those multiplicities that really kick in when pi is non-temperate representation. So let me define some parameters that measure the non-temperateness. So we'll, we'll uh, write p pi as the infimum of this should be here. Infimum of, of, infimum of real par parameters p at least two such that matrix coefficients of pi are in Lp of g. In that way, p pi is 2 if and only if pi is tempered. And the opposite case, uh, pi of 1 is infinite. OK. Uh, so both M and P, uh, we will extend those definitions to pre-compact subsets of the spectrum. So if A is in pi G, uh, pre-compact, then I will write M A gamma for the sum of all multiplicities of pi in A in gamma and P of A for uh, the infimum of uh, P uh, pi as pi varies through the set A. Okay, so um, yeah. I think uh, I'm ready to state the density conjecture or density hypothesis. Sometimes it's called density hypothesis. Okay, so uh, this conjecture was stated, I think, for the first time in the paper of Sarnak and Shue. Ninety-one. Uh, and then it was, uh, it evolved from that point of view. So if G is uh, real semi simple and almost simple, so for me it means that it's either a simple real linear group or it's a restriction of scholars of. Simple, com simple complex group. Uh, uh, gamma one inside G, sorry, inside G is a, is a compact, co-compact. Uh, arithmetic. Uh, 
then there is a reasonable way to define a principal congruence subgroup between a level. So we'll write gamma n for principal congruence subgroup, subgroup of level n. And for those subgroups, we have the following bound on multiplicities. So for only a be compact, we should expect that multiplicity of all representation in A in lattice gamma on N uh, are bounded up to some constants that are allowed to depend on A and epsilon by a volume of G mod gamma on N raised to the power P over two, P, so P A over two plus epsilon. Uh, okay, so uh, in this paper, uh, this conjecture was stated for a, a singleton, so for a single representation, and uh, it was proven in in uh, cases in some absolute rank one cases. So uh, let me just comment why you should expect this. So kind of a trivial bound trivial bound on multiplicity of uh, any representation in, in gamma 1n is by the volume of the quotient. And uh, this bound, uh, in general, it will be sharp because for discrete series, if you find discrete series, uh, this multiplicity grows linearly in the, in the volume of the lattice. Uh, if pi is tempered, we'll typically have, we'll, we'll, we'll have small o here, uh, but for a non-tempered representation, uh, we should expect something better. And uh, this conjecture makes it precise uh, to what extent should it be better. Because it kind of interpolates between what happens for tempered representation, where we suggest this bound with no power saving, and, and what happens for trivial representation, where uh, we can bound this by one. OK, so some uh, results in that direction. As I mentioned, uh, Saran Akshila in this paper from 91, uh, they proved this conjecture. Uh, so uh, density hypothesis holds uh, for G equal SO2 R or SO2 C uh, and gamma one for compact. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, what's, what else we can say in those cases? So uh, we have a Selberg conjecture. Selberg on fourth conjecture actually implies that, should imply that this, this is far from optimal because we should expect that no non-tempered or no non-tempered representations uh, in those spaces L, L, L2, G mod gamma 1M. Okay. Uh, I'll take a look. There are some questions, right? Uh, okay, so uh, 
for uh, G higher rank. So no, no case is known so far. For principal concurrence subgroups, so in the form state of here. Uh, but there is something known if we uh, allow ourselves to look at different sequences of lattices. So uh, if uh, G is SLN R and we define a uh, lattices gamma zero N as follows to the root block, uh, I want this with anything, anything, anything. Here is something congruent to N uh, to, to zero mod N. So for those sequences of lattices, we can say something even better about multiplicities of mountain peak representations or under some additional conditions. So theorem is a theorem due to Blomer and Kane Maga for n equal three and Blomer to n bigger than three. Uh, so if pi is an uh, irreducible representation of SLN R and spherical, uh, we put uh, M cusp pi gamma zero N for the multiplicity in cuspidal spectrum. Then we'll have the following count. So for n prime, if I take a sum mm. overall, yeah, again, A is pre-compact. Uh, so if it's sum over all A, uh, sorry, uh, I'll just take state of version for one representation. So uh, M cusp of pi in gamma zero N is less less uh, dependent on epsilon than the volume of the quotient. And raised this volume should be raised to the power. Um, so let me call the alpha here, and alpha is one minus two times one minus two over p plus epsilon. So it's it's better than what uh, density conjecture predicts. But uh, uh, of course we see different lattices here, and also it's important that this lattice is non compact because uh, the proof of this theorem goes through a variant of Kuznetsov formula. Okay, uh, so what else do we know? Uh, so another thing is known, and it's it's not exactly. Uh, in the vein of density conjecture, uh, but for uh, pi homological, uh, we often have counts of the following form. Uh, Alpha positive, so it's like bound of multiplicity with non trivial power saving over the trivial bound. 
and uh, uh, typically the proofs of those statements for uh, for pi cohomological are different than um, uh, are not not very like we don't use trace formula, but we have special special properties of homological representation. So, for example, such results were obtained by uh, Gary Emerton uh, when uh, n is uh, the power of some fixed prime and. Uh, uh, another another results by uh, Simon Marshall and uh, Marshall and Shin using endoscopy. So uh, okay, and sometimes those those results beat the exponent that is predicted by uh, a density conjecture. And of last thing that I want to say about the existing results that there are periodic analogs. And I think I would like to mention uh, there is an ongoing work of uh, Shai Evra works on this, uh, density hypothesis for exactly in this context of, of, of periodic groups instead of real semi simple ones. Uh, Okay, so uh, now let me mention some motivation for this conjecture. So, except for intrinsic beauty, uh, I would like to present just one application, and this is uh, contained this application I found it today in a very recent preprint of Amita, of Amita Camber and uh, Golube. So, uh, about the names. Uh, so they define uh, like a cousin of density hypothesis, which they call spherical density hypothesis. And uh, from that, they derive some uh, nice uh, theorems about lifting represent lifting uh, elements of quotient of lattice by a congruent subgroup to, to the lattice in such a way that the lift is not very complicated on of the group. So let me spell out uh, what they define, what they mean by spherical density hypothesis. So in rank one cases, uh, this spherical density hypothesis section, a subcase of density hypothesis. Uh, so, mm, so there are two cases, G, G is rank one, and it's just uh, uh, density hypothesis or spherical representations. Uh, while in higher rank, there is some, uh, another feature. So if, then if G is higher rank, Uh, then, uh, then, well, then the set of non-tempered representations, uh, well, it's not well for no, temp spherical non-tempered. Non so in higher rank, the set of tempered representation is not not bounded. Uh, so they they want a, a version of density hypothesis, which uh, controls the multiplicity, uh, uh, like explicitly in the set A. 
which we could, could have seen on the density hypothesis. So uh, let lambda pi be the eigenvalue of the Zimmer operator on pi. Then uh, the density uh, spherical density hypothesis says that equal sum uh, multiplicities of all pi spherical spherical non-tempered and uh, pi p pi bigger than some fixed p and lambda pi less than some fixed lambda, then uh, the sum of multiplicities of those guys in gamma one n should be smaller, smaller uh, than one plus lambda power L for some fixed parameter L times the volume of uh, G mod gamma one n raised to the usual power, so two over p plus epsilon. Uh, okay, so you, you see that in a higher rank, this is a little bit more than uh, density hypothesis because we need this explicit dependence on lambda. Uh, so they prove that this, uh, this spherical density hypothesis has a consequence called optimal lifting property. So uh, let me uh, maybe generalize this a bit. So uh, say in general, say that sequence of lattices has spherical satisfies spherical density hypothesis if uh, those being holds. So Uh, then they prove the following. So theorem uh, number uh, so if this sequence has spectral gap. And satisfies the H, then it has so called optimal lifting property uh, so let me maybe I, I don't want to define the most general. Give you most general definition of lifting property. I'll just say what it means for S and Z, and it will be clear what it means in general. So optimal lifting property uh, so for S L uh, SL to Z say so says that uh, for every gamma in the quotient of S of to Z by principal concurrent subgroup, so S of to Z mod NZ, except uh, small o and the size exceptions. Uh, there exists a lift. In SL to Z, 
uh, with Hilbert Schmidt norm bounded by uh, some constant. No, I'm not bounded by essentially bounded by uh, n power three halves plus epsilon. Okay, so uh, why is it called optimal? Because when you count the number of elements of SL to see that satisfied this bound, then uh, just enough to fit to have, have just enough to find every representative of any element here. So we cannot do better. And uh, like for, for general group, uh, we replace the Silber Schmidt norm with the condition that. Okay, uh, can I say something to, since yes. I make it less sterile for you? Uh, you might point out that, of course, that you have to have allow for the exceptions because there are exceptions. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I just uh, like the idea of somehow us being able to participate, but it looks tough. N nobody wants to interrupt, so I will try. No, I very well welcome all interruptions. <laughs> so yes, thank you. So uh, yeah, we have to allow for some exceptions. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, and in, in general case, uh, instead of looking at Hilbert Schmidt norm, we will look at uh, the position of of the Cartan component in the KK decomposition. So. Okay, so maybe that's uh, enough about uh, applications. And uh, now uh, I should start talking about our own results. So uh, our results, and then I have to uh, yeah, say that everything in this talk is joined with uh, 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 Peter Maga and Georgie. I'm sorry for not having right accents everywhere. Uh, so this is preprint of Amitay Camber appeared yesterday. So we didn't phrase our results in terms of, of their uh, spherical density hypothesis. But what we essentially proved is, is that many, many families of arithmetic lattices in SL2R or SL2C have this property. Uh, so uh, let me be more precise. So let, it, let me fix some notation. Uh, so put Excuse this. me, in the definition of the uh, spherical density hypothesis, there is a power of L. Is that the power comes from Vila or it could be any power L? Uh, Vila explains uh, why it must be there, but it's not clear that it's optimal. So. I'm just asking whether it could be any power L. No, no, or... L, L is, uh, we are allowed to pick some fix L for this family for which this, this holds. I see, thank you. An existing L large enough such that this holds. But yeah, but this actually, what I'm going to talk about later implies that this L that they chose to is, is not optimal, shouldn't be optimal. Uh, but yeah, that, that will come later. Excuse me, for the application, for the application, that, do they care about which L it is? Uh, in their paper, no. Uh, for any L, this uh, they get this uh, okay. conclusion. Thank you. But as far as I, I was able to tell, because it appeared yesterday. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so to talk about our results, we have to set up some more notation because I'll be talking about lattices in SL2R, SL2C coming from uh, maximal orders in pertinent algebras and more, more general cousins of those. 
So uh, let me write K for uh, some finite product of R and C. And uh, we'll be constructing lat arithmetic lattices in SL2K, meaning that this is product SL2 R power A times SL2 C power B. So let me do the construction of arithmetic lattices in this group. Uh, so we start with uh, K, the number field. Uh, such that when you look at the product of all the Euclidean completions, then it's k times sum power of r. We don't know what this power is at this point. Uh, I will write d for the degree, the number field. So we also need to choose a, a quaternion algebra over K, such that uh, when I tensor A over Q with R, I obtain matrices, two by two matrices, coefficients in this K, big K, uh, times uh, C copies of Hamilton quaternions. Now uh, I will put uh, A1, the set of uh, norm one elements. And then I see that A1 of uh, K tensor R of Q is, is exactly SO2K times something compact, SU2 power C. So we choose uh, a maximal order in A, and then we look at O1. So O1, it projects to a lattice in a SO2K. And up to uh, common durability, uh, this all arithmetic lattices in SL2K are, are constructed like this. And uh, from now on, I will abuse the notation a little bit and write the, and write the same letter for O inside here and its projection to this component. So uh, a few facts. So first is that O1 is too compact. If and only if uh, A is non split. And the second thing is that the volume of uh, the quotient is up to a constant. Now I will allow me to skip some constants. Uh, this is a discriminant, field discriminant of k power three halves times zeta k in two. Uh, now this will be product over primes that are ramified in A. Take your norm on this one. And I need to divide this by uh, roughly four pi square power C, power C. So the constants I skipped uh, they depend on AB, but in our our story we'll keep AB fixed, so we don't care about that. Okay. Uh, so if we have this lattice O1, we can also consider this principle congruence lattices. So 
if uh, i inside ok think of integers of k is an ideal uh, i put o1 i as the set of elements in o1 that are congruent to uh, one modulo uh, i o Okay, I think I introduced all the notions that we need to state uh, one of our main results. Uh, so uh, in short, what I can write is that theorem uh, spherical density hypothesis holds for the family uh, of lattices of form O1 i, as long as the degree of k over q is bounded. So bounded. Okay, so this means that in this definition of spherical density hypothesis, let me go back to this. Uh, we are in rank one or higher rank, or let's look at this definition. Uh, instead of taking principal congruent subgroups uh, here, I can take any family of lattices of SO2K okay, constructed like this, with only restriction that the field that I'm going to use has a bounded degree over Q. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, to be more precise, we, we put more so, than this. So uh, you don't need, uh, in these groups like SL2R and SL2C, the non tempered stuff is only spherical. Yes. So you don't have to, you could just state that much more generally, I suppose. Yes, yes. To the full thing. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So, so in SL2, yeah. okay. non tempered and spherical, so imply spherical. So, we actually in those cases prove uh, the original density hypothesis for, for those families. Uh, okay, but uh, as I said, this, this exponent L that appeared in, in the definition of uh, density. Uh, spherical density, uh, we actually found uh, that this L also should depend on P. So uh, I'll make this clear by stating the more, more precise version of our result. Okay, so. So for that, I need some uh, more uh, notation. So uh, let me decompose pi as uh, pi r times pi c, where those are representations of uh, the product of real components and complex components respectively. So those representations, we can decompose them further as a product of pi one times pi two, pi, sorry, pi k. So this would be non-tempered. And uh, next we put a principal series. So uh, I'll put uh, p i p k plus one, p, i, p, k. Uh, spherical principal series. And uh, we have the same decomposition for, uh, uh, for, for, for the complex components. So let me 
maybe change notation instead of writing file, write psi. And uh, here I will write uh, S of this one. Uh, Miko, I, there seems yes. to be a question. Oh, yeah. On yeah. the chat. On the chat. So, how do we ask? Uh, the question, everyone can see it? Oh, I'll, I'll just ask it. I, I, yeah, so I was thanks. confused about you were saying like that it's okay because non tempered Sphinx are spherical. Yes. But I was worried if it's non tempered at one place and non spherical at a different place. Uh, that's a uh, that's different, also interesting problem. So, so you could also the other components would, could also vary in the discrete series, right? So you're you're fixing. But uh, but we for uh, for 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 this moment we are we are restrict. We want everything to be spherical. So it's not it's not quite the full density hypothesis because in the density hypothesis you have some other non-spherical tempered component at a different place. Okay, but yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great, thanks. Uh, but on the other hand, in the density hypothesis, original one, you, you don't see, you, you're not asked to prove explicit dependence on this set A. Right? Yeah, no, okay. so, so this, this, this can, we kind of avoid, avoid this difficulty in that sense. Cool. Yeah. But it's, it's a nice question because uh, we, you could also ask what happens if we fix some of the comp components as non-tempered and then that vary the others uh, in the discrete, in, uh, discrete spectrum. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, so I will go down. So then uh, for this representation, uh, we have the following bound. So then, oops, sorry. Uh, it's also not tempered. Uh, Multiplicity of pi in any lattice of subform OAI is less, less, uh, up to constant depending on epsilon and the degree, uh, than uh, let me write it here, volume of, of the quotient, I'm oh, sorry, pi, uh, times. And now this this product here will play, play a role analogous to the eigenvalue of Laplacian in the spherical density hypothesis. So we'll take a product of all parameters one plus pi and product of squares of one plus si. And this, uh, well, run out of space. And this every this product is raised to power two over pi over p pi plus epsilon. Okay, so yeah, as I mentioned, well, this is of course controlled by uh, by uh, some power of Casimir eigenvalue. I think even you the first power. So this is actually controlled by one plus. Lambda pi. So then, uh, well, our theorem is, for now we have a proof, we re wrote up the proof for, uh, for pi, but we can easily extend it to cover the, the sets uh, A, like in the, the Spherical density hypothesis. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what we prove. Uh, so we can see that this this contribution coming from uh, spherical tempered representations also also is controlled by this exponent uh, two over p pi, which is I think a, a new feature we don't. Don't uh, we we think that it wasn't observed before? Okay, uh, yeah. So that's I think that covers our main result. Uh, 
Um, yeah, and this 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 part that includes uh, this factory is new new even if you even if you look at uh, like fixed order in a quaternion algebra and only only look at the level aspect. Okay, so maybe I right now I would like to say a few words about the proof. Uh, probably I won't have much time to enter the details. Mm. Uh, okay, so uh, we uh, to 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 keep things simple, uh, restrict to the case uh, k equal r, uh, so that we can worry about just one component uh, for now. Then uh, what we will be <coughs> the game is to construct a nice test function such that the multiplicity of this representation pi. Uh, will be detected in the, by the trace formula uh, very well. So uh, pi is non tempered. So I want to construct a nice test function. Uh, right now, the, the, the construction of test functions that, detects, that detect uh, non tempered representation is, is, I think, a quite standard. It goes back to uh, ideas of the, the George and Wallach from 70s. So we want to construct the test function I call it F as uh, U convolution so test function F should be found a spherical function on, on G. G in this case is S sub 2 R. I will construct it as a convolution of U with uh, its conjugate, where U is a uh, mm, this is a matrix coefficient of the representation restricted to some huge ball. So uh, you should think of it as uh, ug is equal i g p0 p0. Uh, so where v0 is a spherical vector. in the underlying representation uh, of uh, length one. Of course, we have to cut it off at some point. So I'll multiply it by uh, some smooth spherical cutoff function uh, that depends on uh, curtain, curtain component and the com curtain decomposition of G. So uh, AG is defined as follows. So this will be so be in the uh, positive out chamber and uh, defined by k1 g is equal to k1 times x hg times k2 and uh, sr well r also is also in this file chamber this is a smooth cut of function that looks more or less like this so it's constant equal to one up to r and then at r plus one it dies off okay so this function uh, because i want to for technical reasons i want to normalize it by the inverse of the l2 normal of u and then uh, it has the following property so if i consider uh, R gamma F is an operator from L2 to G mod gamma to L2 to G mod gamma uh, acting by X convolution by F 
then I can uh, bound the multiplicity of pi in terms of the trace of this operator. Whoops. Whoa. This D of pi and L2, sorry, in, in gamma, it's less, less than this inverse of the square of L2 L of U uh, times the trace of this operator R gamma F. Okay. Uh, So, uh, we can, because, because this is a coefficient, uh, matrix coefficient of a non-temperate representation of SL2R, we know exactly how, how fast they grow, and that allows us to compute uh, this uh, L2R of this guy. And it turns out that uh, L2R of U is at least uh, uh, let's see, B, uh, two row uh, power two minus two over two P minus epsilon, something like that, uh, to R. Uh, okay. Uh, on the other hand, uh, when we look at this trace of R gamma F, well, since the compact, the, the, the portion is compact, we have very easy formula for that. And this is just the integral over G mod gamma of the intersection uh, size of the intersection, sorry, uh, uh, sum gamma in centricated gamma by G. Uh, F gamma BG. Okay, uh, so now in the original article of Sarnak uh they optimize uh, the choice of R uh, in such a way that uh, E power two row R is more or less the volume. So this V from now on will be in the volume of the quotient. Uh, and why this is a most reasonable choice? Uh, because in this trace formula, I can call this three stars. If we expand it a little bit more, we already see that this is, uh, so this was contribution of center which is in this case two times the volume plus sum over conjugacy classes in gamma of volume of centralizer of gamma in G model centralizer of gamma in the lattice times uh, orbital integral. So G mod G gamma uh, F G inverse gamma G DG. And already this contribution brings V to this sum. So the most reasonable thing is to stop R with R at this, at such a point, uh, like at higher, we take highest R for which we still have a chance of the volume being the main contribution to this formula. And this, this is what suggests uh, this choice of R. Uh, okay, so, so in original article, uh, actually so I'm making sure show that uh, this trace R gamma F is less less than B, than volume all around plus epsilon. And when you multiply the estimates, then this implies that multiplicity of pi in, in gamma is exactly what we want it to be. So it's less less than V power two over two plus epsilon. 
but we are not in their situation. Uh, we cannot use the same method to estimate this trace. Uh, but we still, we still uh, need to prove this estimate. So we need to prove this. This is a goal. So we need to do this by different uh, g. Oh. We need to prove this by uh, slightly different methods. And uh, well, in the original method of Cern again, sure was was uh, counting lattice point in in, a, in both in SL2R, but we we go with we will use this uh, form of trace formula. So we bound we need to. Exchange the marker. Sorry. So in our setting, we need to show that uh, the sum of the gammas in O one volume of uh, G gamma. Gamma times I will write this for all the integral of f. But this is we need to show that this is smaller than volume power one plus epsilon power one plus epsilon. And uh, uh, the way we prove it is in uh, three roughly separate steps. Or maybe more. So three plus epsilon. Uh, first, we go through standard method of reducing this to uh, sum of rational pentagonal classes using a Delic trace formula. So this, let's call this four stars. So this Delic trace formula allows us to exchange the sum over conjugacy classes with O1, I mean O1, which, is, which are not pleasant to control, into sum over conjugacy classes in, uh, in the quaternion algebra. Uh, volume is exchange. Now we take a delic volume, so we need to take A1. So those are adults of K. Uh, and we multiply it by uh, orbital integral uh, of suitably chosen test function, which whose Archimedean component is still f. But uh, on, on finite places, we choose uh, just the characteristic function of closure of O1, the weak topology. So this orbital integral splits as orbital integral of Archimedean part times the orbital integral of the uh, this uh, non-Archimedean non part. And now uh, our three steps are as follows. So first we compute this volume of centralizers, of quotients of centralizers. And this, this actually can be read up from literature. This is, uh, now I, I'll, I'll fix D from now on. D is the degree of K. So up to some constant depending on D, this is less, or so less, less uh, than discriminant of K power one half times the norm. Uh, well, norm K over Q relative discriminant of the extension generated by gamma or one half uh, this orbit integral turns out to be bounded by uh, so while discriminant of gamma power uh, minus one half this is 
file the screen mode. Uh, and uh, this another commuter orbit integral uh, turns out to be bounded by also now we see the same by the screen of the power one half uh, divided by this so all of those uh, things are proven with by fairly explicit computation Uh, but the miracle is that, that when you multiply all those three bounds, then uh, every term except uh, the square root of file discriminant is killed. So we end up with the, I'm just almost finished. So we end up with something that is roughly uh, some Gamma contrudency classes so gamma contrudency class so one. Uh, let's add the condition that gamma uh, that those orbital integrals do not vanish. And here we see uh, that every term is bounded by uh, square root of 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 uh, the field discriminant of k. So now uh, this thing, so the problem is reduced to estimate of number of, on the number of conjugacy classes that enter the set. So by using geometry of numbers, and uh, a, a theorem, uh, well, we're, we're using uh, some theorem proved by a subset of authors. Which tells us that number of the set, size of the set is exactly volume, is bounded by volume over square discriminant power one half. And this plus epsilon. And here we also should put some B epsilon. Be more precise. Uh, yeah, so this uh, finishes the proof. In this simple case, yeah. Uh, I guess I ran out of time, so thank you. Okay, so are there any questions? comments? Uh, if I may ask, uh, there's a dependence of, on the degree of the number field. You said yes. that it comes into these volumes of uh, centralizer, which is some kind of regulator. Uh, yeah, this, this, in this part, it's, this dependence on D is not so crucial. Uh, what is the dependence on D? Uh, so, the volume of the centralizer is given as a value of some completed artinal function at a, at one, and then uh, if this is fixed, we can control the uh, the residue at that point. Well, not the the the, the residue of sorry. If this is a This is related to controlling the residue of uh, Dirichlet functions. Sorry, Dedekind, Dedekind zeta functions uh, of, of, of for fields of bounded degree. But the, the real real problem, uh, real dependence on D, it comes in here in this last part where you use geometry of numbers argument, and this is the part that is really sensitive to to the degree of the number field. So is it some kind of Northcott theorem that, you're, that you don't know how to count uh, that? Uh, no, this, this is the degree with, with in the box. Uh, not really here. Uh, so th this counting those conjugacy classes, it, it, it boils down to a problem of counting a lattice points of OK in some very fixed 
very, very thin cylinder uh, of volume roughly delta k power of three halves. And we need to know that lattice is not, is not very skew uh, to, to say that uh, to say that number of points in that box is what you expect. And our argument that shows that this lattice is not very skew, like it, it unfortunately depends on very, very, in a very sensitive way on D. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't know if that answers your question. Okay, yeah, I understand. So I have a question. Um, Firstly, if you're not compact, you outlined in the compact question, then you have to take into account the unipotent or parabolic. Uh, yeah. But I guess in SL2, it's not so much an issue. Yeah. But this looks like such a uh, beautiful conceptual and uh, self-normalizing proof that in principle, it should work for GL3 or something like that, right? Yeah, I'm very hopeful about this. Uh, so uh, the issue there would be that uh, would you start with compact quotient so that you don't have to worry about regular and what, what the trace formula even reads? <laughs> I, I mean, Pro probably I, I would uh, I would start with that. So uh, well, we we thought a bit about this problem. Uh, there are some parts of this proof that generalize to GL three without much much issues, but there are some other parts that are delicate. So, uh, uh, and it's not to do with a compact versus not compact, right? Uh, even uh, in already in compact case, there are some uh, some more delicate technical difficulties. Okay, because this looks to me like the right approach to uh, the density in that it, you use a trace formula, which is yeah, the not any special kind of tricky trace formula or the full trace formula. And from that point of view, it seems like you've isolated uh, the features. So there's no sort of cancellation here, really, right? Well, no only multiplicative. So what's yeah. most important in this proof, at least in my uh, view, is this this thing that you see. Yeah. Yeah. This, this this should be thought as norm of art in conductor. Mm -hmm. of the representation attached to the torus that centralizes this element. So you see this artin conductor, normal artin conductor here, and you see it second time here and they cancel out. Yeah. This, is, this is why this proof works. Yeah. And so that sh hopefully would be a much more general phenomenon. Yeah, I think that's, it is okay. actually more general. Phenomenon. Uh, I have one other question before I give it to everybody else. Uh, how on earth did you set this up so that you can write like this? I've been trying to give a class and I'm, uh, this looks okay. so much better. Uh, let me yeah. explain your technology. Do you see my second uh, screen right now? Not really. Yeah. Not really. Mm. Yeah. I see. I, I see the bottom of it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me just, uh, maybe I'll show you. <laughs> so I, I'm painting, painting, right? Uh, and uh, I use my easel to, to set this up. Ah. So this is painting easel, uh -huh. and the camera is here. <laughs> ah, yeah, genius! I learned a uh, many things on you today, <laughs> Peter. So there is a thing called the doc cam, document camera. Um, one can buy it on the internet. That's what I use for teaching now. You're it's, teaching like this also? This looks like a brilliant idea. So this you can buy a gadget and uh, connect it to the computer and then the camera sees the paper from upstairs. Yeah. 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 Uh, what a genius. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions on math or giving a nice lecture? I, I have a question which has to do with the question that was just asked about like the, the higher rank case. Yes. Like, do you know the, the kind of the orbital integrals at the finite places? Do you think yes. that would be still possible that, to bound in the same way? In yeah, that, 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 actually, that actually looks good. Like, uh, uh, so, uh, so started to look at this a little bit. Uh, for GL, for SL3, uh, you, you also can see uh, this, uh, Norm of art in conductor, 
in the denominator yeah. for the product of, of the of the orbital integrals over all finite places. So this that's why I'm very hopeful about this approach. Uh, yeah. Cool. Um, so, so, so I have a question. So you mentioned the uh, stronger density result. I think originally from Ivanich and Glomer generalize it for higher rank groups. Uh, can you recover that bound uh, no, in no, the special is, case of... Uh, uh, no, because that bound speeds the, uh, the, the density hypothesis. And uh, if you want to, uh, in some sense, density hypothesis is the best thing you can prove without exhibiting constellations between individual orbital integrals in the trace formula. So if you by some miracle knew that, uh, well, maybe this is a stretch. Like to, to, do, to do more, we would have to exhibit some non-trivial constellations between different terms coming from different gammas, different controversy classes, and that looks hard. Uh, some kind of cluster man type packing, right, on conjugacy. Something classes. like that, uh, but I know I, for now. Well, this, I, this is done uh, in uh, um, Ali Altav's thesis. He recovers what you get from, I mean, in Zev. Hello, Zev, good to see you. Uh, uh, yes. In Zev's thesis, he explained how you get the uh, trace formula, the relation between the, P as a limit of the Peterson formula. Yeah. And Altag went backwards, which is what the question is here. Can you recover essentially yeah. the Peterson formula in SL2 from the trace formula by putting in the class number and then approximating L1 chi? And Altag recovers uh, that, but you have to work much harder. And it's yeah. not uniform over all the number lattices at once, which is what's impressive here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Any other question? Okay, so one announcement. Next week, Charlie from Colombia will speak at the same time with the same link. Okay, so let's thank Mikolai again. Thank you.